Hello everyone, welcome to the Penfield Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting for April 9th, 2024. I'm Don Hoyler, I'm the Assistant Chair. Uh, Shri Kartek is our chairperson and unable to attend tonight. So we will uh, we'll get started. I think everyone here has the agenda. Um, does anyone have any additions or deletions they would like to make? No. It, it doesn't, you didn't call anything out about the eclipse day. You might want to talk about that. I was going to talk about just in the 2024 events, but I can, I can talk about it now. Um, just really, I, I think, a uh, great opportunity for Rochester and the, and the town of Penfield and surrounding towns to, you know, have a once in a lifetime event. Obviously, you know, I think the weather uh, kind of underwhelmed, you know, everybody's preparation for, for years and years and years. And, you know, shout out to Dan Schneiderman. I know um, he worked tirelessly and, and did many years as a town of Penfield resident to uh, be the main uh, focal person for Rochester um, so I know all the uh, hard work and effort he put in so um, I think all the planning from the town that we did for our viewing event at Harris Whalen went well um, didn't have any issues and had uh, about 400 people come to, to Harris Whalen Park to view it which was uh, a nice positive event for the community so uh, really happy with, with everything that happened just uh, of course you know Rochester weather is something we can't count on very nice thank you uh, so the minutes from the March 12th meeting, everyone's had a chance to look at those. Does anyone have any comments? All right, then you shall accept those. Um, discussion points. We'll start with the uh, 2024 Parks and Rec Master Plan Update Committee. So I can start, Adam. Uh, yep, Andrew, go for it. And so the uh, community input survey was open for about six weeks, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that closed on the last day that those were accepted was Friday, March 22nd. Um, final total, I know over a thousand. Yep. Okay, so that's a, a very uh, large number. Very happy with that. I think it compared to 650 Correct. five years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty significant. And uh, so the committee has looked at, at those. Um, the <coughs> Survey Monkey tallies all of the, the voting. And the comments, the, the recreation team <laughs> has taken all those comments and, and uh, entered those into a spreadsheet. So that committee has the opportunity to review all of those comments. And uh, the next meeting is tomorrow night. And so April's, uh, so there's a series of meetings and the intent will be to pull together drafts of the plan um, for review in May by the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, by this board and uh, with the goal of getting those t in front of the town board and hopefully approved in June uh, before the summer hits. So, uh, anyone have any other questions or comments? Anything you want to add? No, no, just, you know, thank you to that, that committee. I know at our last <coughs> meeting, uh, we really just went through all those responses and survey information. So I just uh, am blown away um, by how much responses we got. You know, I, I can't push enough that, you know, let's not wait every five years to, uh, <laughs> to communicate those things. If there's yeah. ever any needs or thoughts or, you know, things that the Rec or Parks Department can do better, you know, reach out at any point. But certainly it's, it's important to have these five, uh, your master plans to scope out future things, but uh, just really impressed with the responses we got and I'm um, excited to see what the, the committees come up with for their first Yeah, draft. I felt like there were a few surprises, mm -hmm. you know, some reaffirming numbers and some very thoughtful comments, a lot of very thoughtful mm -hmm. comments. So I think there's a lot, a lot there. And so thanks to the community for such a, a strong response. The uh, Penfield Trails Committee, um, Bob, would you like to comment? And any of those, and I can sure. Um, <clears throat> last month we had a rainy hike that Don and his wife Liz ran um, with six people, uh, I believe it was, um, mm -hmm. here at Veterans Park. Um, this coming Saturday is Thousand Acre Swamp, which looks like decent weather coming. If I'm <laughs> reading it correctly, I we'll hope. Um, so 10 o'clock for those of you listening, certainly. In, We'd love to have you join us. It's a great place, especially at this time of year, to mm -hmm. see all the spring flowers. Um, the Trails Committee has started a project to go through all of our maps, both the Wegmans Passport map, the website maps, the trail guide that we have, try to make sure they're all updated and um, 
consistent with each other, so that's a process. We spent a bunch of time at our last meeting going through that, so hopefully in the next couple of months we'll be able to get everything updated. Yep, and continue to make progress on the, uh, the passport itself, the, not just the map, but any of the comments, um, the markers, the posts. Um, we did make contact with Mineral County and Abraham Lincoln. They've said, go ahead if you want to put a marker in or move the marker if we can find it in the old location. So Bob and I will follow through on that. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll let you know, Tim, if there's anything on the Parks Department to okay. do. I don't know if you would put a post in on a, in a county park. We can do that as long as they say it's okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a text. Perfect. <laughs> if that's good enough. Perfect. Um, all right. That sounds good. Um, <clears throat> just regarding the Veterans Park, and then you, um, that's not a real great hike um, to guide. It's not a bad walk, but it's it's really not a great hike. So I think as a trails committee, we've we're considering uh, replacing that for next year. Um, in addition to that, you've commented that the winter night out event in February will likely not be scheduled again in 2025. And that was a night that we would do the, the full moon hike. So that will probably change. You know, we might still do that, but maybe it's someplace easier to walk at night than Harris Hill. So a couple things for the Trails Committee to, uh, to look at for 2025. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we talked about at the last Trails Committee meeting, after looking at some of the comments to that survey, um, a lot of people were asking for various, um, almost like pop-up hikes in addition to the, the monthly guided hikes dogs, adaptive, uh, more strenuous, more varied. So we've started talking within the trails committee about ways we could do pop-up hikes, you know, so more to, more to come on that. <coughs> um, okay, thank good, thank you. Uh, Tim, anything um, from the parks? Um, parks, basic, uh, our big projects that we've been working on is the new, um, parking lot that we're installing over at Rafa's Park to be, give access to the new uh, athletic fields that we have gotten over there. Uh, hopefully we're going to get that finished up before the start of the soccer slash lacrosse season. Uh, we did actually get our um, robot painter out there today and started painting some fields. So we got basically all of Rafa's done. The fields um, are all done, just the parking lot at this parking point? Parking lot needs to be just touched up, grading work, site work. Um, we, start, we painted all of our office today. We're planning to get Greenwood tomorrow. Um, as far as like cl field closures and everything, they're still closed because of they're so wet. Um, and we're hoping to next week, April 15th, starting go day to day, checking them out day to day um, and working with the sports groups to open and close them. Tim, I have a suggestion. That yeah. robot, I know a lot of people have said, oh, that sounds really interesting. I suggest you try to get a video of it and put yep. it on the website. Perfect. Yep, we did talk to Dave Renner. We had a couple meetings with him today, and they are going to come out one of these days to video it. Hmm. Yeah, and I, cool. I, I think I'd continue to highlight, but you know, the amount of money that you know the town invested in for this robot um, for lining. <clears throat> I don't want to speak for Tim by any means, but there is no way we would be lining any fields at this point if we didn't have a robot liner. Uh, mainly because, like Tim said, the fields are wet. The old machine is a couple hundred mm -hmm. pounds, yeah. and then you also have a person sitting on it. So that needs to come into, you know, oh, is it too wet for the, in all that stuff to, you know, line a field takes. It's, um, it's man hours. system was yeah, it's man lining hours it too. out. It, it, how, what's a rough estimate yeah, for usually, a field to be Usually lined? for a soccer field, it would take us like probably about three hours with three different people between stringing it out, measuring, um, then painting it, then picking up all the string, and then you have the old string. Wasted. It takes 20 minutes, 25 minutes to do a full-size soccer field with one person. So it normally would take us to do raw office if we were going to do it like we did today, two to three days with uh, three or four staff doing that for those who we got it done in one day with one staff member. So I think just headaches in general and, and, and us being able to open up fields earlier based mm -hmm. on weather uh, when they are able to be open right away. It used to be, okay, they can be open, but we still need to line them. Um, so we've seen a huge increase in that. And also, you know, I can't thank Tim enough and his staff with the training on it. You know, 
to, to see the video of dropping a, a field down and using the GPS and then watching the robot is a whole different thing, but to teach your staff to be able to do it. And when we sit in on meetings with community sport groups, everybody wants a field line this way and that way and all these different ways for, for Tim and his team to do what they do. Um, and using that new machine just, I think, takes all of the headaches and issues out of it, uh, especially with the, I think we have a Cinco de Laxo tournament that comes up that as much as that's at the school fields, the town technically lines those, mm -hmm. and that's how many fields total? Yeah, it's through, it's through, um, who's it? Youth Penfield Youth Across. They came to us and asked, like, hey, can you line the fields for us? In the past, we wouldn't be able to do that for them. They, we supply the labor, they buy the paint, we paint the fields for them. We can get those done and there's about 14 fields that we need to do, separate lacrosse fields. And um, just helping out that community group is huge. Normally, we just couldn't undertake that extra task. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big proponent of, the, of, of doing that robot. Coolest so. thing you've ever seen, yeah. so we'll try to get a video. Um, <laughs> What else do we got? Uh, the field painting, hopefully next couple weeks we're gonna be starting in on Little League, getting that all set up for their opening day, which is the parade and everything is May 4th. Um, and that's what we've been pretty much nonstop working on, trying to get ready for summer, that kind of thing, so. Okay. And what's, how about the pickleball? Courts, obviously, that's underway. So, yeah, the pickleball courts, I always preface this with it's not just pickleball courts, it's two inclusive playgrounds, <laughs> it's a restroom, walking yep. trails. Um, it's underway. There was some tree removal out there. I met with the construction company a couple weeks before. We readjusted some of the um, walking paths to take out less trees um, through the, the hedgerow, tried to save as many as we can. Um, but they are working on the um, force main right now to Harwood Circle, and they're gonna be starting on, they actually started on the trails today. Their idea is to work from the outside and bring everything in. So the stone dust trails on the outside, they're working on that right now, and then they're gonna bring everything in and actually work on site. That is their game plan for um, that project. What was the thing to Harwood? Um, sewer. Oh, okay. Um, yes. So I think they're starting, like Tim said, you might see, you know, pieces of machine out further than where the actual scope of the project is, but they're trying to get those things done first to get the utilities in there, obviously, work on the trails, and then um, we have some cross-country meets, um, certainly in the fall with the school district, but some um, fundraising and different uh, charity walks planned um, as early as June. Uh, so the hope is is that they bring everything down so it's less impactful for those future uh, uses. And the trails are semi-set before right. the actual opening and it's just not um, rough, hard scaped. It's actually finished grasses growing around these stone dust trails. Okay, any problems? They still on track They're as still far on as track. we know? Yep. Sounds good. They worked yesterday morning, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they were working they were during there. the eclipse. <laughs> Not, well, they took the afternoon off. They right. took the afternoon off, but yes, they were, they were over there in the morning. Good, good for them. Um, it's a bike project. Um, ben, is there anyone can you talk to? Um, Current, there's not much know, I know it, changed, it, but. It, not much has changed. I know yeah. since the last meeting, some of the trails committee and, and uh, Linda was on a site walk. I, I mean, it might be nice to get some some comments from people that aren't, you know, knee deep in the bike community, if, if you had any input on it. Sure, sure. I went out on a walk, a guided walk of, of that uh, potential proposed bike path, and it was, it was fascinating. It really was to get up into different parts of, of the property that mm -hmm. I haven't been before. And I think what really impressed me was the fact that these are not and shouldn't be considered purely a bike path, that these will be, could be universal to, to work for people to walk them, um, even adaptive um, use for them. Some obviously because of the steep mess might not be, but it was fascinating to see all that they could do. I learned a lot, um, a lot of new terminology and that was great, but it, it was definitely exciting. 
Is there anything staked out um, yet, I, or no. is it? I mean, it, when you say guided, you're going out there with with well, Adam, with the, the leader, with, Adam. with the oh, guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, nothing was so. staked. Nothing was. He could was point. Definite. He could point to where right. what his vision is, right. but it's okay. not. It's not quite right. there yet. Right. Yeah. But very early. Better grades than the you know mm -hmm. in the steeper areas where the paved path is. Yeah. You know, it might be who has to take the paths out, or maybe not. But he's going to. Put, his plan is to put in trails green and blue, right, mm -hmm. for difficulty, that come in at better grades. You know, by that bridge, if anyone's familiar, it's very yep. steep, and you know, there's a 180 degree blind corner, and so he got some. He's really thinking about multi-use, and uh, I think we'll see that when we see right. a proposed plan. It, it was just. It was just fascinating to be able to say, well, now what about this? How would that work? And, and what about this section? And how would that work? And and he could re respond with some good ideas, with some, you know, some intelligent information of, okay, this is why this wouldn't work specifically for a trail, a bike trail, and this is why this would. Um, he certainly uh, knows his stuff. <laughs> it, it, when he was talking about uh, using the hills as a buffer for both sound and visual. Uh, Separation for mm -hmm. some of the trail aspects. Right. I that, that was that impressed me because he knew what he was talking about, like you said, right? right. So right. that's very cool, All right? Yeah. So we're we're all anxious to see, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think they're still at the gathering stage. Right. You know, they've done. You know, a Adam, Ben, uh, some others have have done many. You know, guided hikes and and walkthroughs. So can't can't thank Adam enough and Ben too for. Uh, for all your time with with meeting with different residents and groups uh, to kind of have that you know walk through and I we're way ahead of the game in terms of uh, we don't have any stakes we don't even have you know a trail map plan yet mm -hmm. but that's coming but it's just great to get you know all that information and I can't I can't thank you know the town board and and town for really looking at this project as something that came out of you know the original uh, moratorium mm -hmm. committee as Again, a, a piece of the the south side, but with that connectivity piece um, of really, you know, Adam looking at it as a whole of, you know, these are trails. And uh, to Linda's point too, uh, when we've done the, the walkthroughs, a lot of that is on places where it hasn't really been touched. You know, it wasn't a part of the golf course, so you don't have the uh, the paths. Uh, it's right. it's new stuff, and it's uh, you know it's exciting to think about new opportunities that people haven't seen over the years mm -hmm. um, at that site. So uh, I'm excited to see what comes out of it too. And, and I think one of the most important factors was as we walked it that the trails will go in, but once they're in, the disruption to the wildlife, mm -hmm. to the natural beauty of that place, it, it won't be as disruptive, I think, as perhaps people were concerned of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was able to provide examples to that. And I thought that was very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's always, you know, we talked about it at the last right. meeting too. It's always tough to see it in right. the early phases and you see a large blob of blue there. <laughs> exactly. But then when you go out on the hike and, you know, obviously, if you don't have the information, you don't know, and you right. you can think of a million different things. But uh, to see it on some of the guided hikes, um, and the way that Adam describes it, is it, it's really cool. And, and again, it's all being presented; nothing's right. being exactly. hitting the ground. And I I think this is really just yeah. uh, such a great thing that the town has you know gotten Adam uh, to come out with his expertise. And um, we're hoping when Tim and I originally thought it'd be us with you know <laughs> machines and <laughs> shovels and right. things like that, uh, it's just really great to to have somebody coming out thinking about adaptive trails and multi-use trails. Right. Um, and then we're hoping to kind of shift that potentially into other parks and areas to mm -hmm. uh, just look at our entire trail system as we as we redo things. So it's exciting. Yeah. He did make the comment also he had his own bike project survey that he had 400 plus responses, mm -hmm. so also a significant number and also a lot of very thoughtful comments. Mm -hmm. So he said that's been, been helpful and informative for him so yeah, I think something a tangible plan is coming soon to uh, the last I talked to him he was walking ar around with some of the crack folks to kind of get some of those visions he, they call it ground truthing basically what he has envisioned on paper they go and make sure that it works at the site and he's, he's done that with a few of the crack folks and it seems like that's one of the one of the later steps before they actually have that that packet with the plan and and present and and run it by stakeholders and and um you know eventually present um so 
yeah, it's really it's really coming together. Um, I did have a question as far as you know, it, it, both in Shadow Pines and then possibly expanding shared use is like, when do we, when can we make that like official in the the code book, right? Because it, as of right now, a lot of those trails, I I think it's limited to kids' bikes. Uh, yep. So how do how do you approach that? As, as of right now, you know, it's mainly you know only where posted that we have signs and we don't have signs posted other than for youth and things like that. So uh, I think this has been that project that we've talked about, you know, once it gets presented, if, if it does move forward and, and how so, then I would think it would come in front of this advisory board to advise um, higher ups on potential town code changes. Certainly, you know, Tim, um, uh, Planning, zoning, engineer stuff like that would be involved, but uh, I, I look. This is the catalyst to starting those conversations to see uh, it shifting not only at a specific area but potentially other areas as well. If there's a need and a want in the community, and and hopefully things go well, it seems like we're, you know, hopefully setting it up for uh, for good things to happen. But that may not have answered your timeline, but. <laughs> no, yeah, but it, it, it gives. It, it gives yeah, a, yeah, this is just a good stepping stone to like right. actually start with Shadow Pines and then, right. like you said, hopefully move to a different um, park property if yeah, need be. But yeah, I, I wasn't wasn't really super concerned about the timeline, just more of the process in general. How yeah, that, the, how, I know the process. I'm not too sure up on the process. I know it is a not super lengthy, but um, for changing town code. Um, I'm not too sure on that, but it's a, it's it's a semi-lengthy process between meetings, open meetings, um, mm -hmm. so public can come in, you know, discuss it. Right. But I'm not an expert on that. But I know it's yeah. a semi-process that you have to go to. It's not just either you know, myself or Andy saying, okay, now you guys can ride no, no, bikes yeah. there now. It's and I think it would be good to get input from this committee mm -hmm. or, or board, excuse me. Um, if again the the Shadow Pines project moves forward, and then if it does go well, and you know obviously having the the stakeholders like Rock and and other groups you know working well, if we see that, then you try to replicate it in other areas mm -hmm. and expand it out. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it would be to hopefully change the code uh, to just make it a little bit more. Uh, accessible for everyone at different areas. So yeah, realistically, we have to change the code if we go forward with this bike project because we can't have a bike project and a code saying that you can't ride bikes. So right. and I it's kind of like. <laughs> and I think a lot of you know what we've heard tonight just about going out on those site walks. Obviously, we're still early in those phases, but I think a lot of things from what we've heard from different um, groups like Victor and and places like that that have installed these sort of things. It's it's just going to be a huge educational piece. Um, and having those stakeholder groups uh, working with the town uh, to be able to educate the community on, you know, you hear, oh, bike paths, you know, I'm going to get run over, all these things. There's, it's not just bike, the bike community that has to be educated on uh, appropriate ways to navigate those trails if it's multi-use. It's, it's everyone, and um, we're certainly learning a lot from Adam and, and, and from other municipalities and groups, so we're, we're excited for that education piece to come out as well. So. I, I assume that will come out as the town code potentially is getting looked at changed uh, for Shadow Pines just so that you know everyone is aware not just you know a couple sentences in the town code it's uh, a lot bigger of an educational piece right cool thank you okay good uh, okay before we move on to rec I know Steve sometimes you like to provide updates on the this golf um, I, I, I don't have much for uh, mm -hmm. regarding Penfield specifically, mm -hmm. but in the disc golf community, there's been some interesting things that have happened recently. They've rebasket, they put uh, new baskets in at Ellison and new tee pads. So that's all brand new, uh, which is uh, it's the first time in many years that they've done that. Um, and then um, the, the reason I bring this up is because it's becoming kind of a hotbed area for disc golf. And then in Parenton, there is a new course going up in Hall Road. Um, I was out there a few weeks ago with Jason and a few other guys doing some throwing, checking it out, right? Just seeing if it really kind of fit what Jason had in his mind for the course layout. Anyway, they're proceeding. They've finished some brush cleanup there, and they're going to be opening up, I think, um, eight, eight holes, seven holes. 
uh, pretty soon in the next few months, and then, and then by the end of the phase, summer, they right? hope that they get all yeah. of them in. Yeah, sorry. So, but I, nice. it's very cool. It's all within a 10 mile yeah, yeah. or less radius mm -hmm. uh, of this area. So, um, and I continue to see rave reviews for Shadow <laughs> Pines um, and the upkeep of the course uh, for disc golfers. So, a uh, great asset for the community. If, it'll be sure. interesting to see if Ellis and Park numbers start to go up at all. Maybe yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be keeping like an eye on that yeah. for sure. I'll get some of the statistics from Jason here as the and summer goes on. If it's just on. more more people playing, or if people are that's moving. what I'm interested in. Is there going yeah. to be a, a switch, mm -hmm. or is it going to be an increase for everybody? Yeah. Um, it, it, we'll see. Nice. Um, and uh, the, one thing too is there's a lot of disc golfers now that have. Uh, a lot of extra discs they're willing to donate. So if the recreation um, uh, department was interested in getting discs to be able to give out for starter packs or loans, um, you, we can work on something there. Um, and I, I don't have access to a lot of people, mm -hmm. but I have access to people that have access to a lot of people. So yeah. um, we should be able to uh, help facilitate that. Thank you. So. Is that an action that somebody can follow yep. up on? So we, we've actually, we, this is coming from a, a conversation that, you know, Steve and, and I had, um, you know, the rec department has been looking into, um, you know, looking at pickleball, looking at, you know, bocce, just things that we offer that maybe people don't have that equipment for, like some sort of a equipment rental um, process. Certainly disc golf was in there as well. So, you know, we've reached out to, uh, to the disc golf with, uh, with Dave and hoping to offer something. I don't, I don't know how soon that'll be, but it would be, hey, come to the rec department, you know, potentially there's a fee or there's a, a deposit or something. This is uh, a whole new process, correct? You yep, yep, just to, to rent equipment, if, whether it's pickleball equipment to go test it out or, or bocce at Harris Whalen and um, thinking about, you know, cornhole and, and things like that, uh, just different ways that we can put those things into the parks that we've heard, certainly through the master plan. Um, but really, we're planning on having a beginner um, disc golf course this summer that's led through, I forget the gentleman's name, but he's a part of uh, the association. Uh, yep. So kind of going through that as well, having that equipment available with beginner classes just kind of makes sense. Um, but I did want to add um, for, for last year when we had tournaments at Shadow Pines and things like that, it was difficult for people to know Oh, there's a disc golf tournament that day or there's a cross country meet or something like that. Um, so what we've done so far is on the town's website under the Shadow Pines um, disc golf section, which is under projects of community interest, right at the top of the page, we have listed dates for large events happening at Shadow Pines. Pretty much they're all on the north side because that's where disc golf and some of these um, fundraiser charity walks are. Uh, but you can go on there if you're ever interested in seeing, oh, is there a disc golf course or a disc golf um, event or something happening at Shadow Pines? Uh, those dates should be listed and we're gonna try and update it as much as possible. Um, but really the majority of the disc golf events I think planned for the year there are, are up there now so you can kind of plan. I think those are on the kiosk, the, the disc golf kiosk, right? But maybe uh, there is a posting of there of the tournaments. I'm not sure if there's a, it's been updated recently though. Yeah. I mean, sure. Something like that feels like that could be on the kiosk. So totally. Yeah. Can, yeah. I could follow up with that. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. I did not play today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, recreation updates. Yep, so um, our summer 2024 brochure is going to be finalized um, at the end of this week, early next week, uh, and printing late next week. Um, and we'll be in residence mailboxes by the end of this month in early May. Uh, registration for uh, summer programming will begin in mid-May. I believe it's the 13th of May for residents and the 20th for non-residents. Um, again, our larger summer programs like summer youth soccer, some of our youth theater and summer camp are offered in our winter brochure. Um, but really the majority of all of our other summer programs um, are in this brochure coming out. So we're excited. Um, we've got 56 pages worth of wonderful information and it just seems like our brochure continues to grow and grow and grow. Uh, one thing we heard from the, the master plan input is just how effective 
uh, people get their recreation programming from that brochure. Uh, so we're excited to hopefully continue to, to print those and get those out to the masses. I'm sorry, what were the dates for registration? May 13th, I believe, for residents. It should be a Monday if I look at my calendar. That yep, May 13th, and then the 20th is non-residents. Okay. Um, and like I said, the, the brochure will be out at the end of this month, early May, depending on your post office. Um, but that kind of leads into 2024 events and summer concerts. All of our summer concerts are booked and are in the um, brochure, as well as our events like Memorial Day, our food truck and music fest that we do at our amphitheater that kind of kicks it off with the school district. Um, we've got Tasting the Blues in the fall, uh, just a, a bunch of community events as well sprinkled in. Um, just really excited about uh, all the different things that we're able to offer and, you know, knock on wood, Rochester weather cooperates this summer. <laughs> just like it did last summer? <laughs> Yeah. You, you'll see you'll see four of the same bands for sure because our policy is always if it rains out uh, we try to make sure that we book them the next year as long as they can so yes you will see some similar bands due to unfortunate rainouts last year um, and we are planning this year we usually have our famous town hot dog cart at all of our concerts uh, something I've worked on since 2004 when it started um, and it's kind of hurting me to say that we're not going to be having our hot dog cart anymore, but we are going to be having effortlessly healthy food truck at all of our concerts. So um, over the years, we had many requests for food trucks to come in, and it was always kind of a, a tough spot to give up the town's hot dog cart. We still have it. It's still certified. You may see it out, um, but we're excited to offer effortlessly healthy food truck at all of our concerts. So it's, it'll be a nice change. It's, it is a lot of work for the, the hot dog cart. <laughs> Okay, and any luck um, hiring or adding staff? I know you've been trying to yep. expand. The yep, um, with, with summer camp, uh, we have, I believe, 10 new hire potentials that are going through the process uh, of hiring right now. Um, they're not officially confirmed by any means yet, but, but going through the process, but we're excited for those 10, and I believe that gets us to the point to be at least adding maybe 20 to 30 more at, at both locations total. Um, so nothing that's putting a dent into the over 100 people that are on wait lists for, for both locations, but uh, at least it's something. Mm -hmm. um, we would need another probably 10 to 12 new hires with some good experience to open up our Harris Whalen Lodge. Um, I'd love to say in, on April 9th that you, you know, we'll get people in the next couple weeks and then be able to plan it by early May, but most likely um, we're only going to be able to add um, just some here at our two locations. But uh, it's uh, something we're looking to. We had a great conversation last month uh, about maybe changing how we're registering, maybe waiting until March next year for something like this, but hopefully uh, either looking at other school districts uh, locations or just going to the lodge for next year for sure. Mm -hmm. Good. I think you said it's something. Trying. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Okay. Anything else, Andrew? No. All right. Thank you. Uh, other business? We have none. Held items? No, no action items from last month. We have closed all. Old business? Channing Philbrick Park Trail Bridge Project. So, I don't uh, know. Yeah, yeah, there's no real update with that. I know the last thing we've gotten was some uh, different ideas on railings for from um, MRB, different designs um, to go along the side for safety reasons. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's just been um, the same. Okay. They were doing like test footers, I mm -hmm. think, and some things. And yeah. Any no. major red flags that no, you're no, aware no, of? No, no red flags that I've heard of. Okay. Yeah. And you still any kind of outside shot at this this year? Probably season? not, just because of the yeah. DC, the t um, wildlife yeah. seasons, and all that. Not surprised, but should be a good position for next year. Mm -hmm. All right, with this work. Okay. Uh, no new business. Actually, the discussion has led to a couple questions in my mind. So if I okay, sure. Um, number one, is there any plans to change the designation of Shadow Pines to be a park? I know there's some legality issues of why we haven't done that in the past, but will that ever happen? 
I know it's it's come up. It's been discussed. Um, I have not looked into any of the details. Um, I know from a town, it's you know looking at at the options and see what goes into it to designate it a park. Um, but uh, I just know it's been a discussion at, at at some meetings, but nothing. You know, I haven't heard any updates on what the process and what are the requirements. I, I don't, I cannot speak intelligently enough about it at this point. I will take that as an action item though and see, because I'm curious as well. Um, I, I do know that once you designate as a park to to change anything that requires state, um, I think maybe you Yeah, it needs, to, it needs to be signed off by state legislation if you wanted to add anything or because it's a certified park land. Right. Um, my other question is probably somewhat related to that is um, it certainly saddened me to see all the trees come down and a lot more went down than I ever expected. Um, partially, I guess I hadn't looked at the, the plan as much as I should have to understand how close it was going to be to um, up by Atlantic. But it led to an email discussion um, that Don started with Mark Valentine and apparently there's a tree guideline but it's a guideline, not a policy, regarding the replacement. Um, and just wondering whether we should be looking to I know that's switch something. that into something policy. I, I'll, just in general, you know, it feels like we've taken down an awful lot of trees at Shadow Pines. And I'd, I'd like to see a thousand. You know, you planted, what, maybe 20 something last year, Tim? Yeah, we planted about I'd 24 like, out front. I'd like to see a thousand planted. It just seems like trees are coming down a whole lot faster than them. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned it's certainly about a perception is. whether I do know it's true or not, or whether some how many are. I do know the you. tree policy. I guess I can't speak to it specifically, but I do know that's in front of another committee, and that's their responsibility, and they're yeah. working on it for many, they're many yeah, meetings and things like that. So I, I can't speak to the specifics. I don't think it's something that this committee, you know, will kind of wait and see with with that committee. But yeah. I, that's the I, I think there's a lot of pieces that go into the the trees coming down and yeah that would, that would be the EECC and we would probably most likely follow their lead and their guidance on what is EECC environmental and energy and environmental yeah. conservation it used to be the conservation committee it was on committees and they are they have in front of them a tree policy um, that's part of Penfield becoming a tree town, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of things that go into it, and that's part of it is when we take down trees, what are the what's the policy for putting in new trees? Right. Who can take down trees? Do we have somebody that looks at the trees before we take them down? There is a lot to it. Yeah. Um, last thing I know, the town had some comments, and they were going back to to adapt it. I, I will point out. I've told some other people this. You know, the extreme of it when we lived in Massachusetts. Trees on public land greater than a certain diameter required a public hearing for each tree to be cut down. It's in their constitution or something. Mm -hmm. So that was probably extreme, but um, <laughs> they would go around trees instead of taking it down to put a sidewalk in because it was so much pain. Mm -hmm. So I think the action really is to follow up with the EECC and and push for that to be adopted because now you know it's would it be grandfathered in it this project probably not no but <laughs> it's too late now the trees are gone but. yeah well no but you, to, to honor the spirit of the tree guideline mm -hmm. it called for two trees for every eight inch and three trees for every 16 inch diameter and i know and i know mark i don't know if he got back to you with the actual number or anything like that but i know there's a significant amount of trees being planted in that new right. um, so, area right the, the plan will call for correct for, for that anyway but yeah it was sad you yeah, know well, you're not alone i've heard it from quite a few myself mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, uh, new business, uh, public feedback. Any, nobody's in the audience, no one online. So I think that will wrap us up. The next meeting is uh, the second Tuesday of May, which is May 14th, six o'clock here. And with that, we are adjourned at 641. Thank you.